Hey everyone, um, I'm actually on a different stream here because originally the one that was set up doesn't seem to be working. Um, it was set to some streaming software and it wouldn't let me change it to live from my computer camera. Um, so I will give people a few more minutes. Um, Hannah, you might want to just pop out a message on, um, on YouTube or rather on Instagram or possibly on Nithub so that anyone who needs this new link has it. Um, I will make sure to, um, to start it slowly so people have a chance to jump in and won't miss anything. Um, as well, so I see all of the chat on the side because for some reason, YouTube decides that I should only see the top chat and I shouldn't see everybody's chat coming up. Um, but I am going to have a slow start to make sure that anyone who does want to come in will have a chance to come in. Um, hi, Liz, you found me here. I was just saying that I was I was having a lot of technical problems um, because the preview that was put up was on a streaming software and it wouldn't let me change it to just doing it on my computer. So, but you all found me, look at you, you're finding me here even though I'm in a different spot. Um, I'm just, I am starting a little bit slowly because obviously the original link isn't working. Don't you all just love tech? It decides to go play games with you as you're doing it. Hey, you all found me in here even on my different link. Nice to see you all. Um, I saw a few faces yesterday because we had our seasons, our autumn seasons launch came out yesterday. Um, and you will know that I'm still on the recovery end of Ryan Beck, which was an awful lot of, of fun to see people. I saw lots of, of familiar faces and new people, old people, everyone popped in. It was really nice to see. Um, but I have something new for you today as well, but I'm going to allow just a couple more minutes for people to be able to actually find this one. What with the fact that we had the wrong link coming in. You may notice, you may notice what I've been showing off in Rhinebeck. Um, this was the secret. This is the surprise. It is a brand new sweater um, in the jazz yarn um, I, because I just... I really, really wanted to knit with Jazz again. Basically, when I started off doing the Celtic Knits Club, um, we were primarily focused on cables and texture and things like that. And when I started knitting with it, I'm like, it felt to me like it was just calling out for uh, some color work, that there was enough of a halo and blending of the different um, of the of the the different fiber contents in it that it felt like in color work it would just blend together really nicely so you can kind of see it in action here and believe it or not I have never ever designed a color work yoke like I've done other circular yokes where I've had um, where what I've done with the circular yokes is I've had a bands of cables like an ulok um, and a few other ones where I've just like the holly um, the holly blue last spring was the same thing it was a circular yoke but it was with lace so this is the first time I've done one with color work um, that was a self-published pattern there was one in short row knits book um, many years ago but the difference with that one is it was uh, it, it was the first time I was doing it and it sat okay but I tried to keep the band very narrow um so so it looks like it was so that it would it wouldn't have to do increases in it um it looks like a great Halloween sweater it reminds you of spider webs you're totally right it like I realized after it wasn't designed as a Halloween one but it does definitely have spider web vibes going on about it um so I think it also um I'm kind of I'll show you the process of where I actually designed it and how I changed it originally it was closer to these ones here Whereas a very vertical pattern, a bit more like, I think, kind of almost a fern pattern. Um, but when I added in increases, it became a bit more triangular and tree like. Yeah, exactly, Liz. To me, it also reminds me of Christmas trees. I think part of it will depend on what colors you knitted in because of the fact that um, different colors are going to give it different vibes. Like if we go for, let me find one of the color options here. Like I think with these kind of color options, we're definitely hitting the Halloween-y, pumpkin-y feel to it. Um, but once you actually go for um, slightly kind of more reddish uh, uh, 
purpley colors, I think then we're heading into a more Christmassy territory. Um, oh, don't worry about being late into it. This is my mistake because I messed up the first stream. So I had to open up a new one. So I'm starting very slowly with it. And I'm going to take my time to allow people to actually transfer over to here so you know where you're going. Um, so yeah, totally my mistake. Um, so that, yeah, so basically it is more or less my first top down color work yoke that I've, or at least the first one that I've been really happy with. And um, because last year I felt that I cracked the shaping on this style of yoke with the Ulock because it's, it is top down. Um, if I turn around here, you can see there's short shaping across the top of the back of the neck, which of course what that does is it brings the back of it up a little relative to the front. So you can see how there's a small little bit of the main color here, but as you come around the back here, it gets deeper. So what that does is it, without having to do increases around the neck, it creates a, natu a natural shape where it's lower in the front and higher in the back. So that's really comfortable to wear and it gives it a very obvious front and back of the sweater as well. Um, and so the circular yoke shaping is quite similar to what I did with um, with the Ulook. Um, and in fact, for the actual sweater pattern, which it, it is coming out today, it's up on the it's up on the website. And don't go away before the end of this, because I, I do have one more early bird surprise for you. But I'll tell you at the end of the live. Um, but the top of it, when you come down, you've got the circular yoke. And I started, first of all, to see if I could get away with doing just the color work with no increases in it. Now, the risk you run with that is it doesn't sit right. Because when you're doing a circular yoke, where it sits on your shoulders and your neck is going to depend on the size of each section. So if your neck is very tight, it's going to pull it up higher. If it doesn't increase fast enough, this part will sit here and you'll get kind of a cone like effect across there. So that's why when you're doing the short rows, you start doing a little bit of increases across the back of the neck because then that gets it to sit down nicely. So then you've got a big increased circle around here and you start the color work. So my first run through is like, I'm going to see if I can do the color work without increases. So basically what you see over here. So this was the first swatch I did, and it's just, you can see it's done vertically straight down. And I did that all the way around, finished it, tried it on, and it just wasn't right. Because of course, if you don't have increases across the bottom, what ends up happening is this part has to push up higher. And so the whole thing pushes up and it's too tight across here. So at that point, I'm like, I just sat down and I said, I've got to, I've got to accept that this has to have increases in the color work to yoke. So then I swatched, this is not the whole color work, this is just the second half with me testing out how the increases are gonna work. And you can see how it changes the shape of the motif. So this is the original motif. And then this is what it looks like as I started increasing, putting increases in so that the bottom part is wider. So I finished that one. And once I finished all those increases and I put it on like that fits so much better. I've never been so happy to rip something out in my entire life because it suddenly fit across the shoulders and it was exactly the way it was meant to be. So it was definitely um, it was definitely well worth ripping it out to actually get that right. Then you've got a few more increases and you separate for your sleeves. I'm going to stand up for a small second here. So your body here then is just separated down and I've done very small amount of A-line shaping down the side. You can see it's long enough to kind of fit at the top of um, of, of your pants or, you know, just it's not it's not a short cropped one, but it's not excessively long. So that is something if you like a much longer sweater, it's knit from the top down. So you just keep going. You can also add a little bit of waist shaping in if you wanted to um, or you can just keep it straight down. I do think a very, very slight A-line shaping is a very wearable shape. And then by putting just a little bit of ribbing at the bottom, it stops it flaring out and feeling like it's too big at the bottom. And then finally, the sleeves. Again, I wanted, because I tend to layer a lot in the winter time. I didn't make them too fitted. Like they're not loose, um, but it's a little bit bigger along there as you go. So it means that it just, it fits nicely. It's comfortable, but it's not baggy. Um, everything can be done from the top down. It is, it uses very small amount of yarn because of course it's done in stockinette stitch and Jass is a very light yarn and it flies along. All of the sizes only use a single skein of yarn across here. So if you've got a little bit of yarn left over from the Celtic Knits Club, 
you could use that for the contrast and then all you'd have to do is get the main jasp for the body. So very straightforward. The pattern, it, it come a little bit like the knit along. Um, it's going to come with a set of tutorials, but it's not the full tutorials. So what I've actually done is I put in the first two ones from the Ulux sweater showing you how to cast on and how to do the short rows across the back because it's identical to the, the way it's constructed in that. Obviously, it's a different sweater, but the actual techniques are going to be the same. The section I've put all of the tutorial into is color work. So I've talked about reading the chart, how you work the increases, how to be careful with your stranding to stretch it out and things like that. And also looking at color dominance, because, of course, when you're doing a pattern like this, you've got one color that you want the dominant color. So in that case, it's going to be the turf or the brown for me. And then across the background is going to be your pattern or background color. So you always want to hold the dominant, your pattern color. In your left hand if you're doing it with two hands and the background color in the right so that the stitches of one are just a little bigger relative to the other and they're going to stand out it's a really tiny difference but you once you're consistent going through it it can really make a difference with how that color work pops out for you also with colors um as we we're saying it's in jazz yarn um, and you're going to want a little bit of contrast in the color so we actually when we we're putting the kits together we went ahead and we've swatched up all of the colors so that you can see what they look like together. So I'm kind of going to go through the different ones. You can see this is the same as I'm wearing here with the background in loam and the pattern color is in the turf. We've got the inverse of that, which I think also works really nicely. This was, I was hard pressed between the two of these, which to go with. So this one shows the background color in your turf and the pattern color in loam. I put the two up together. You can see they're both really, really nice, but different looking. So just to show you how pattern color doesn't always have to be the darker color. It can be the lighter color. You just want a nice big difference in the color tones. The other two ones that we've done inverse wise um, are the um, heather color here with the loam as the pattern and the loam with the heather as the pattern. Again, I'll hold this up here so you can see it a bit better. Here you can actually see each of them up along and you get a feel for how they look different in this spot. Um, now, where are we? The next one, we've got another one here where we've got the two going on as well. I was saying this one is almost got a slight more Halloween feel, um, but I actually, I would, I think this would be a gorgeous full sweater. So you've got the background here in the roan, a very orangey color with turf for the stitch pattern here. And then this is the inverse here again, where the background is in the turf and the stitch pattern is in the roan. So just lovely, lovely difference in the colors. And again, for this one, you have to kind of envision it where the whole sweater is going to be this dark color with just this stripe of color across here. And this one, of course, you're going to have the roan in the background with just a small little bit of the turf running across here. And the final one we put together here was we had the barrow blue color with the turf running as the stitch pattern across the front of it. So my question for all of you is, do you have a preference with color work like this? Do you tend to prefer having the band in a lighter color or a darker color? Or do you prefer your sweaters light or dark? Um, we were kind of, it, it was a hard choice debate wise, but um, I, both me and Laura ended up doing sweaters in the loam, um, but we're actually probably going to be doing a second sample of it. And I'm probably going to reverse over. I think we might go for the darker color in the background and then the, uh, and then the lighter color for the, uh, for the yoke, but I'm still not sure which one it's going to be. Um, what weight is the yarn? Um, is it a sports or worsted? It's actually an iron weight. So it would be, which iron is going to be a little heavier than worsted, but it feels very light. The jazz color is particularly light because of the fact that it's got a little bit of mohair in it and it's woolen spun. So it doesn't have the density that you'd often associate with iron weights. So while it's warm, it's not excessively warm um, and it doesn't have too much weight to it. Um, Kathy, you like the dark design with the light background. Yes, yeah, so similar to this. So yeah, the options for that then are going to be um, something like this, where you had the roan in the background with the dark design, 
or possibly this one as well. Here's the that shows uh, that shows very well because that is such a um, a high contrast again, similar to the one I'm wearing. And that's your heather color. I keep forgetting the name of this. I, I go to call it burgundy, but it, this one is, is the heather color. Um, Audra, you like the blue background with the white pattern. Yeah, that is super pretty as well, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's, and I think that you kind of, you're going to win with each of them. It doesn't really matter uh, which one you end up going with. But we do have, we've put kits up for each of them. Um, if you've got, obviously, if you've got some of the yarn already, then you don't need to perhaps get a contrast color. You might use that as a contrast color and then get enough yarn for the rest of it. Um, if you put the pattern, I, I just realized I never shouted out the patterns called You More. Um, so you can actually find You More in the store immediately. Um, now, this is the one where I was saying, listen out to me. This will be coming out in the newsletter this evening, but I'm telling it to you first of all here. For this weekend only, we've got a 15% off site-wide sale with the code black cat just black cat all in capitals we're having a halloween sale we sometimes do trick or treat but we decided we were just going to go do a treat for everybody so we're going you will have a halloween sale with black cat coming out and it what it basically means is you're going to um yeah you're going to be able to get 15 percent off the kit 15 percent off the pattern um and yeah you get to you get to enjoy and knit this for less money um you like the burgundy and the light contrast this one here oh that is i that is super yeah i'm actually quite a fan of of this heather with the yarn here this yeah the two of them either way around I like both of them they both work really well but you can see how it looks quite different still all looks good still looks quite different um but yeah they're just gorgeous so here are the yarns in here we go I'll pull the two ones up so you can kind of see them together so this is the option this is what the full skein of the heather and the loam look like together and I'll swap a few out and this is the loam with the barrow that's the barrow the blue color and here we go uh, this one we don't have a color option together for it because we preferred it with the turf so this one we just didn't we weren't as fond of as this one it still works but this is turf and this is the roam color again you can flip those in either direction and they work really well and i didn't pull this one up yet this one is your barrow and your turf here and i think I think that was all the color contrast we had up. Uh, Liz is saying you think both ways work well. Yeah, I think so. I think that it doesn't really matter which one you end up with for the brightest color. It's going to it, it's going to work in either direction anyway. Kathy, you may have to knit two. That's kind of the way we're feeling around here. It's like I've knit one. I think Sue is probably going to knit one. We're going to uh, Mags, who's working with us, is going to knit one more sample for us. So because I want to keep this one. This is the sweater I knit very very few sweaters for myself but I actually didn't want to make this a shop sample I wanted to keep this one for myself because it is probably one of the most wearable sweaters I have made for a long time I just put it on it goes with everything it's very comfortable and it was crazy fast in it so it's um I don't often give as many glowing praises about sweaters but it was it was one I knit for myself basically it was like it was like I want a color work yoke sweater I don't want a very wide band. I want it to fit well and I want it to be comfortable enough to wear with everything. So they were kind of my criteria for making it. And the starting point being that I love knitting with jazz and it, the color work for jazz didn't fit in with the Celtic Knits Club. So it felt like it had to be something separate outside that. Um, so it was quite a treat to actually get to, to work with it. Um, and it was very last minute because it wasn't until September I started knitting it. Um, so normally most of my designs are planned months and months and months in advance or sometimes even six months or a year. So it is very rare for me to go ahead and plan, design, knit and release within a couple of months a sweater. <laughs> um, but because the color work was the only part we had to be very careful of, making sure that worked OK, but the rest of the design was kind of similar to what I'd done before. I felt quite comfortable with the pattern layout and how it all fit together because it all made it basically made sense relative to um, relative to what I'd done before. Now, in terms of our shop here, we're going to have we're coming up to Halloween, which you all probably are. 
heads up in Ireland, our, our change is this Sunday, which won't really impact many of you most of the time, but we may have, uh, I don't know when it changes in the States. I think it may be a few weeks, um, might be a few more weeks before um, it, it changes again in the States. So we'll probably only have a four hour difference. And we have got a bank holiday on Monday. It's a, so this, we won't be here on Monday. So if you do order, if you order this evening or early tomorrow morning, items will get shipped out. But anything ordered over the weekend or on Monday will not be shipped until Tuesday. But Laura, as you know, is super speedy. And, and Mags, I should say Mags as well. There's, um, yeah, Mags comes in a couple of days a week to help Laura out with shipping. So they, they're very, very fast to get orders out, but they're not going to be working on holidays. So <laughs> I'm looking at, uh, I'm reading the comments here. Luan, you love them all. And Liz, you'll be marrying by, by this next weekend. Yes, or maybe she'll be wearing three if we know Liz. Anyone who has been watching Liz with the Galanta knit along, it's very impressive. She has knit three different versions. Admittedly, two of them are best. I will give you that much, but I am completely in love with her, um, her Blasta Bond, the white Blasta Galanta one. It is glorious. It's, it makes me kind of want to get some more Bond because I'm not even sure if we've got any left in stock or if we do, it's, it's very nittle. I'll have to kind of hide it away, squirrel it away somewhere. Um, your your time the u.s time changes on november the 5th oh so it's only a week so there's just one week where we're on an hour difference don't think of any lives next week so it shouldn't impact in terms of the timing and we'll all be back on the tape the same five hour difference at that point but i am so excited to actually share you this sweater with you all um yeah, it was uh, Nadia who works with us here was actually laughing she said when i'm doing videos for something that i'm really excited about it really transmits and it's very obvious that it's something that I absolutely adore myself so this is this definitely falls into that category it's wearable and I think everyone should have a you more sweater by Christmas time and if you don't have a chance because you're doing Christmas knitting now once you get past the color work yoke the rest of it is just straight in the round so it's actually perfect Christmas time knitting so if you don't have enough time to finish it before your Christmas then I would try and just get past this place because that's the only spot that will take concentration. And the rest is going to be fantastic when you're hanging out with people because you're just going to be knitting around. It's in fact the kind of sweater or the project that I take to get to that point when it's Christmas time. So if I'm sitting, because we have a family who tends to come back and we have a lot, a full week of just sitting around, eating too much, drinking too much. And I usually would try to have some knitting with me. It'll often be socks, something like that. But if I was doing a second version of this, that would be ideal. So yoke can be done for pre-Christmas and then the body and the sleeves can be Christmas time knitting. Um, so that's if you don't get it done before, then that would be my suggestion. Hang on to the uh, to the body and the sleeves for your Christmas time knitting. Give yourself a little present of having a nice new sweater by the time Christmas is over. Um, but thank you all for joining me here and jumping across to a different live. Um, I am going to pop up the I'm going to pop up the live up here afterwards, so you can, the recordings so you'll be able to see it. it. Takes a few hours, but it will be up here. Um, and thank you, and enjoy you more. And I hope you all come along and knit with us over the next couple of months. Bye.